All right. Hey, welcome back. Nice to see you again. Uh, we're we're here to hack on a game we're a bit developing called Land Trek. And if this is your first time tuning in, uh, the project is written in Haskell. It's a game based off of a really old one from the 80s called Star Trek or Super Trek, and it's many, many, many clones and variants that have been made over the years. We're just making another one in Haskell, learning about uh, terminal UIs and libraries like Lens and MicroLens and uh, different programming patterns and that sort of stuff. We build things in Haskell on this channel and, uh, you know, to learn to grow, to expand, to try out new stuff, to, to show that programming and functional programming and a language like Haskell is actually very practical and very pragmatic. And there's lots of reasons you might want to do so. So uh, to give you an idea of what the game looks like so far, I got to get in the right project directory, of course. Kadoosh. All right, so we got this little S here. This is kind of like our quadrant view, like one little quadrant. We'll, we'll fix the rendering so it looks cooler, but uh, right now it's got like the less, that's the player ship. This little tile over here is an enemy ship. We just started implementing space stations where you can like recharge your energy app. And we got stars over there. You have like a little, this is gonna be like our HUD on the right here for the ship status, energy levels, how many torpedoes you got left, all that kind of stuff. We have our input, our commands here. And that uses up our energy. And then we have like a little dialogue system. And so we can fire our phasers like with 20 energy. And so our combat officer is like, ah, oh, minimal damage, sir. Should probably rename that to tactical. But still, we have a couple of other ones. Like uh, if we try to move into that star, and we have the helms person tell us Hey, that would take us directly into the star. Can't go there. I'm not going to move. Um, so yeah, this today, I think we're going to get uh, working on adding docking to the stars to recharge your energy, the space stations. And we'll see how far we go from there. See what's going on. So that's the game so far. Hey, Kazarak. How's it going? Welcome to the stream. Nice to see you. Thanks for stopping by. If this is your first time or anybody is a first time viewer and you're watching, feel free to interrupt me with any questions you have. I'm happy to answer them. Um, show me your projects, ask questions, tell me about cool articles you read recently. Give me some spice if you feel like dropping a, a hot take, all good. All right, so we're gonna get started. We're gonna go into the simulation and we're gonna check out our station. So stations have a certain amount of energy and a position X and Y. Super cool. And I guess we need to implement a new command to recharge at the station. So recharging at the stations, you gotta be next to them in the quadrant and then you can transfer some of the station energy to your ship in order to recharge I think later on down the road it'll be nice once we implement some enemy AI for the enemies to be able to attack the stations if they are close enough that would be super cool uh, but we'll, we'll get there eventually so our commands are over in the command module here and right now we have engine move and jump move that's going to be later when we implement uh, the, the quadrant map, like the galaxy map. We can jump to different quadrants. Uh, we have the fire phase command, so we need a we need a docking command. Let's go ahead and that, add that. And docking... I don't think we need to put any hand into it, like any parameters. We just dock, and if we're close enough, it'll do the right thing. Okay, and let's fire up the builder. We'll use a, we'll keep the test runner going. 
Well, uh, fast file watch. Bam, just like that. Okay, so that's going to keep our test runner running and everything compiling while we while we go. Hey, Withermaster505, what is this stream about? We are building a game called Lambda Trek. It's uh, a clone of Star Trek or Super Trek. Uh, we're building it in Haskell. Um, learn for funsies, because that's mainly what I program it on the stream. Sometimes I do other stuff, JavaScript, whatever. Mostly Haskell. All right. So you can uh, you can move around the ship around. You can fire your phasers. You can destroy ships. Right now we're implementing docking with that dollar sign. That's going to be our space station there. We're going to dock with it. So we're going to implement a new command. So we need to implement a new command here. That's this cat. This cat. We got to implement a new parser for it. And then a new handler for the command when we dispatch to it. So we add a command here. Uh, we need uh, to go in the parse module to get the parser for it. So parsing, uh, we're using just the built-in base library parser combinator library, which is pretty rough. Um, there are better libraries out there, but we're not doing a ton of parsing in this game. So um, it's generally pretty good for like small parse tasks where you don't want to pull in a whole library if like you're just doing something like this where it's like just like little little tiny strings you're trying to get some data out of okay so let's put it down after parse by your phasers why not put it right here parse doc there's gonna be a read key that's return either a command parse error or a command of course it's gonna be the doc command that's gonna return that's what it's all about. That's cool too. So if there is something you are curious about with master, feel free to like jump in with any questions. Okay. I'm happy to teach. I'm happy to answer questions. Um, or just like chill and hang out and watch, see what's going on. Okay. So we're going to implement the parse command. We're going to implement the parser for the doc command. This is going to be pretty straightforward. All we need to do is match a string doc. That's it. All right, we're going to ignore the results. So string matches that. All right, so the parser has to match this entire thing. Otherwise, it's going to fail. And then we go EOF, so we're going to match the end of file for our string, and then if that succeeds, we're going to return the result uh, doc. No squibbly jibblies. Everything is going to probably compile and go green. And that'll be good. Dope. Okay, so we implemented the parser. Check. We're good. Uh, maybe we should write a quick little unit test just to like make sure that docking works the way we want it to and specify that. We could do that by going over to our test module. Spec. Okay, let's add... So let's our simulation sector. Let's do a couple of tests for um, the dock. Space station. Simulation dot station. Um, no, no. Update simulation. Yeah, this will probably be the right place to put it. Okay, let's give the context of a doc doc command. Hmm. So we want to say that when we give a doc command and the station has enough Oh, that's we do need a we do need a parameter for our docking command. Right? If I write this out here, basically I want to be able to dock and say 
I think I think you want to be able to say how much energy. We can make up our own um, Star Trek. No, uh, super track maybe. I think I think the dot command took a moment of energy. Pocket Starbase. Let's just dock, okay. Oh, cool. So, yeah, there's like a little bit more simulation going on here than I was thinking. Uh, in the super track. So that's super cool. So it recharges your whole thing. Maybe we can just get rid of the energy then and don't do the energy transfer thing. You just recharge everything. It'll just eat up some of your time, say. That, that's probably the good thing. That's probably how you should do it. Okay. So we're good here. So a dock command, it should recharge the ship. Energy. We're only, we're only doing the energy right now. Energy. Um, so it should recharge the ship energy. Um, so if we go here and we get the initial state. Um, depleted ship energy. And we're going to use the record update syntax here. So the initial game state get uh, gen with our random generator, our pre-made one for testing, uh, such that the game state ship is such a ship that uh, that is at eight ten with zero energy six something. Oh, there's a, probably write that out long form so that we can uh, we can see this when we're right, reading the tests. Um, but given that, our expected state uh, should be the initial, just the initial game state. So fully recharged ship. We run exec state and we run this command uh, state with mm. oh no um let's put the ship's position because it's got to be next to the uh, sector the the space station. Yeah, that comes from Vector, I believe. No, uh, game state. Yeah, okay. Uh, empty sector. Ship starts with a hundred energy and we're going to oh uh look at the sector. We have like an initial sector. Where is that? Empty sector. Uh, the station's at 9-1, so we'll make it at 8-1 for the test. Uh, 
like that. So it's next to the space station. And if we exec the state, the state, uh, the depleted ship state, um, oh, and we want to add the game command here. over here move us over here the game state command uh, equals just doc and then when we execute uh, update simulation on this initial state then it should be that we get the expected state that should be good enough So in our initial state, the ship starts at 100 energy. Uh, we create this depleted ship state where it's zero. And by executing update simulation with this command in entered, just entered by the user, then we should get back to that initial state where the ship's energy is back to 100. That's not right, what am I doing there? All right, that fails because there's some missing stuff we haven't implemented yet, which is good. Okay, so that's going to be in J -j 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 simulation. So this is where we handle all of our commands. And we're just pattern matching here on the commands that we uh, had earlier, right? Make sure I got you a chat. Got you back. Okay, so we just have to handle that there. I'm just gonna pop that over here. Now we have to handle doc. Call it handle docking. We haven't implemented handle docking yet, so let's go implement that. We'll add it down here. Yeah. So the type of this function is going to be a state. That's a monad. Ooh. Game state. And it's going to return uh, just unit. I'm not going to return anything. It's just going to update the state of the game. Game state. It's just going to update this record here. Okay. So let's just make the code do nothing just so it compiles again and we can see that test fail there we go Come on. so we expected that but we got that and so not right we want it to be this Oh, uh, mm, we have to change our end state in the test here. Uh, so we want expected state to be expected state, except the changed ship position. So initial game state such that the game state uh, ship is still the same positions, 8, 1, but this would be 100, 6. And the game state command, I think we should be nothing after. And let's just check that again. Right, we really only care about the energy here, right? So that's the only thing that's really changed. All right, we wanted 100, but it's zero at the moment. So, okay, there we go. That's good. So the spec is seems about right. Now we just have to go implement it. So how do we do that? 
Well, we're just going to use our good old modify function, probably. Um, do I have that in scoop? Yeah, I think so. You could do it like this. Um, where with... Ooh, yeah. Let's use our handy dandy lenses. Microlens and TL is the library. This library has been super awesome. Uh, le using lenses with the state monad is super cool. Because we can zoom in on a part of our state and then get these like mutation looking operators. So we should be able to just zoom on the ship dot uh, energy right and do um, uh, we can set it even 100 and then we'll probably get some type errors here because I'm probably messed something up here so uh, that's not I meant. I meant shipped out energy. Okay. Okay, that one's not in scope. Yeah, that's probably. I think I did something weird with the setup for the game state lenses. So it's probably game state ship. Okay, and this probably makes more sense if you look at it like this. Um, that's probably just not the right operator. Dot equals. Yeah. I think we want dot equals. Okay, what's our type arrow here? Yeah, no instance for has energy. Dip dot energy. Uh, oh, maybe we're not using the right uh, lens for that. There's our ship. Should be energy. Oh, okay. I guess this is focusing in on a record that has more fields. Okay. So really, I can do this. I don't need the zoom. Ah, okay, cool, cool. That's 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 nice. So we should be able to do game state ship ship dot energy. Dot equals 100. Super. Okay, cool. That compiles and our test pass, so that works. Okay, so. Uh, well, it's, there's one more. I think I feel like there's one more part that I need to hook up here. And then we'll have that all working.
here. No, no, the info panel. Runs the parser. Yeah, we no, it just goes right to handle command. Okay, and the parser returns this time. Yeah, so it should work just right off the right out of the right out of the gate with this. Um, so let's run it. Try to do dock here, it does nothing. Uh, so we need an error state for it still, but let's move next to it. Eight one. And dock. Ooh, yeah, okay, no command. So there is something missing there. Ah, I know what it is. Yes. Back to the parser. We had a parse dock, but we have to do update parse command to also try the parse dock parser. Start the game. It's right 98, and if we do dock, we should get back to 100. There we go. So let's move closer to the enemy ship there, fire a bunch of phases to destroy it. Cool. Uh, move over next to the station, dock, and get our energy back. Sick. Uh, maybe we should add a little dialogue for that. Let's let's commit what we have so far, because that works. Let's go add some dialogue to it. Our simulation, handle docking. And then we could just do say dialogue. Uh, we'll make the helm say it. Okay, then we need the error states. If there is one. Yes, there should be one. Uh, so our test is making sure that we have to check for that, that we added this dialogue, so. Eh. be nice if our test if our test didn't if I could just like write the parts like a view for the parts that we cared about checking in the spec and ignore the rest uh, it's not a problem to add it for now um, dialogue here those imported here. Okay. So the other thing that doesn't work right about this at the moment, we move over, no, say, uh, here, phasers 39. And we move down here and we type dock. We just go back right up. We should only do that when we're next to an actual station. Right. So our spec isn't clear about that part.
Going next to a station. It should return uh, a dialogue, uh, an error dialogue, when not next to a station. Uh, should just not retard. Not recharge, that'd be better. Yeah, should not recharge the ship when not adjacent to a station. Uh, with Master, I am using Emacs. That's my IDE. More like a programming environment, but yeah. That's what I use. Um, I am technically using it on Windows, but it's really in Linux because of WSL and stuff. Okay, so we want to recharge. We should not recharge the ship when it's to a station. So our depleted ship state, let's start with that. Similar setup, except our ship will be, say, at zero, zero. And the state, the end user just entered the dock command. Then our expected state should be the ship is still at zero, zero. The energy is still zero. And we have a new dialogue. Uh, maybe like Callum could say, there is no Starbase uh, to dock at. Captain. Oh my god. Jump over here, we'll grab this. And we'll just pop that over there. That should be good. Well, it's got to be indented a little bit there. There we go. And that'll that'll fail when we run it, but I think that'll compile. Okay. Yeah. So it's recharging the ship to 100, and it's saying that. We don't want it. We want to say this. So that, that looks right. The spec looks good. Let's make that work. So that means we have to check the state of where the ship is and if it's adjacent to uh, any stations. And then we, I think we're going to count... Let's count diagonals. So in anywhere in the neighborhood around that... around that station. So that's that square, that square, that square, that square. All those should be good. But not this one. Okay, so we're gonna need a way to search the neighborhood around a point in a quadrant. That's gonna be a thing. And once we get all of those tiles, we can just check which ones are stations or not. Uh, or... No, the best, the better way would probably is to look at the... Because the, the... The sector has the data already. It has an array of stations, and we can just check their positions. Right, are any of those positions adjacent to us? So we just need a function that checks a position is adjacent. Yeah. 
So we can write, what, how do we want to write this? We could even maybe even pull out the station itself from that data so that we can say something more interesting by how I'm like saying we're playing relinishing stations at. Which station are we replenishing at? All right, we can put the location there. So let's make it look like, um, station would be, um, find station. In fact, we can probably even bind that using that. And find station would return it. Then we can case match on the station. So either we find it or we don't. Right. In the nothing case, we would return something. But we know what to do with the just case. There's going to be a station there. Let's call it maybe station. I think that's that would be good. That looks reasonable. So we either find the station and, or we don't. And in the nothing case, um, I think we should write a spec for that. No, we already have that. Yeah. The nothing case we know what we need to do. We just need to add, say, the dialogue. Basically that. Okay, so we haven't implemented find station yet, so this isn't going to compile. Station is going to be a uh, state, state, uh, station, maybe station. And we're going to go in here, we're going to pull out the station. Okay, so uh, station, sector stations. Uh, game state sector dot stations. Just do it like that with the parentheses, I think so. Okay. So that pulls in that array from the sector, and then we have to search through that array. We can transform it into a list and use the normal search functions that we know there. I'm just checking if the library has one already in it. Yeah, so I think we're gonna, the 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 array is not going to be very big, so converting it to a list and using find on it won't be a big deal. Let's do that. Okay, so we've we'll used that. Um, we'll convert it to a list using elements. All right, so if I bring up my type errors now, in my hole, I need to return something. 
and sector stations. Uh, so inference can't figure out what the type should be. Ah, okay, so it doesn't know what that is. I have that in scope as a radar elements. I can't use... Is that a precedence issue? Yeah, it's a precedence issue. Okay. So now... Um, so all I've done here is this little operator here is like my is my F map. It lets me like put a function and operate inside some container. So my function is going to be array.elms. It's going to go inside this state container that's pulling out this data. And we're going to call array.elms and you can see that it transforms it into a list of station. All right, so from here, uh, data.list is the library. We'll put with our list functions and we have a function for that list.find in sector stations. I think it's called find. Yep. Okay. So in this hole now, I need to put a function that has this type signature, station to bool. So station to bool, uh, we're going to look at the ship position and the station. And we need a function that will tell us true or false if they're neighbors. It's adjacent. So we'll need like an is adjacent function. And I'm going to say is adjacent. Hmm. What would be super nice is if I could write that fairly generically. I want to be able to write just is adjacent and put the ship here. This is what I want to write. Uh... Like that makes the most sense and reads nicely. Okay, this might mm, this might need a little refactoring in, in order to be able to write this function. Because right now, is adjacent has a very specific type. If I do this little trick here, uh, sorry, adjacent. Like it wants a ship to station to pool, and we could we could just write that that way. Um, we don't have to go generic right off the bat, but we have other things that have positions that we might be interested in adjacency of. It might be worth doing it now and just getting that out of the way. I'm going to do that in a separate pass. Let's just make this work, even if it's a little janky, and we'll pull it out if we find that we need this in more places. So this is going to be ship to station to bool. Okay. So we're going to com compare the X fields and the Y fields and if they are 
either less, one less or greater, one greater than, plus or minus one of the station's position when we're adjacent. And that will cover the whole neighborhood. X. everything namespace so I have to add these extra like everything qualified and that's position yeah that should be good Okay, so then we just have to return a bool. Now we can always just put false in there, or true, and that wouldn't be very useful, but um, let's see, how do we say, uh, plus or minus one. X to station X and plus or minus one if Y to station Y. So we have a case where x minus y is equal to, so if x is greater by 1, we subtract y from it, then we should get 1. This will all be one formula. Yeah. Uh, or we have x uh, minus y is equal to negative 1. Brackets around. Okay, and then and we don't use the station variable here. Let's just ignore that for a sec and see if our test passes. This is... which test is this? Oh, we broke the other test. Huh. Oops. Let's 
probably because plus or minus one isn't implemented properly. Because I think in that test, da -da -da, if I look at the spec, just make sure that's right. Um, we're next to a station. Uh, the game stage ship is at 8 1. That's next. That should be adjacent. Yeah, so we got 9 1. Ah, I see. Yeah, so it could be equal. Or. Uh, yeah, it's just this. It's this plus or minus. This is a JCC test. That's that's the thing we gotta fix here. Okay, so here plus or minus one. The sh we're considering them separately, and if they are both true. That could be f fine. They both have to be true in order for this whole thing to be true. Is adjacent. Um, so I th yeah, I think plus or minus one has to include equal to in order for that one case to work, right? Is equal to y. There we go. Super. So if we restart the game and check it out, this should be now. Let's move 7 2. Let's fire some phasers. Move to 0 0. Let's dock. There we go. No dock to start. But we can move to 8 1. And we dock here. We're good. We recharge. All right. Story complete. That works. Love it. Let's get the dialogue going there. So let's bring station back in. Let's clean up our errors and just do a little pass on the code. Make sure it looks great. So we're going to put this here. Here, here. do an opening parenthesis there and we'll put um, through, uh, station x mm -mm -mm. Can't use pass show. We got to use text off pack with show X. Comma. Yeah, I'm gonna do it again here. Position Y and close parentheses, comma, sir. Adding more and more parentheses until things start working. <laughs> Super unnecessary. But winter hopefully will help me clean it up here. Okay. 
And then what do we got here? Yeah, we just have to update the tests. And then we're good. Okay, well, we got a warning here. Sector stations. And sector. No, simulation line 16. Okay. No. One thirty six. Okay, we're just gonna name Shadow. I'm gonna clean that one up. There's six. There we go. We can probably just call it stations. No, we can't. Um, call it local stations. Or just sector stations, prime. Yeah, that's probably fine. All right, good, good, good. Some compiling code, some passing tests, loving it. That's nice. Okay, looking good so far. So yeah, yeah. New seven one, new right eight. One, two, seven, three. Phasers, 89. Boom, blow it up. Sweet. So yeah, there we go. All right, we got station docking implemented. Let's commit that. Um, make sure. Only recharges right adjacent to a station. Just rebase that, squish that down. Barrel. Yeah, the ship only recharges. Yeah, that's good. Sweet. All right. So that's handling docking. I like it. What do we need to implement next? We need to implement... Well, we have game over from running out of energy, but we also have game over from running out of time. We could implement... Start adding the infrastructure to implement time tracking in the game. Seems like a good, good step. Let's do that. So every time you make a move in the game, it takes a certain amount of time. All right, moving across the quadrant takes a little bit of time. Firing phasers takes a small amount of time. Docking takes probably a big amount of time. Or bigger. All right. And it's a fight against the clock. All right, so the game's all about using your energy efficiently because you got to take out all of these enemies across the entire galaxy map and do it within the time constraint that you're given that's kind of the whole challenge of the game so let's implement our time clock we're going to simulation 
Let's go to the game state. Let's see, we could add it here as like kind of a global thing in the game state. Uh, uh, turns, turn counter. Turns remaining. And hmm. what does Super Truck start with? I think it was like a thousand or something like that. different difficulty levels and all that sort of stuff because you can configure things. I don't think we're going to do that. For ours, we'll just make it all... Um, maybe we'll add that later on, like configuring some of these variables, because they're just variables. We should be able to do that. But I don't want to get like too hard into configuring things. Um, let's just choose a reasonable default to like test things with. Let's make, let's make it 200. Okay. Uh, so we don't have that field yet. Let's add it here. After chip, add our definition. Okay, we're gonna use an int here for simplicity's sake. Uh, we could, like, use a more stricter type, maybe, to constrain the range of values, because we don't want to be able to go to negative turns remaining, and uh, we could use, like, word here, maybe. That's only positive values. Well, I've got a couple of more warnings we could clean up here, too, actually. Come on. Uh, I'll stash this for a second. And just clean up those warnings. But, um, yeah, we could, we could use, like, a word there, which is, like, only positive integer values up to, like, a machine specified size. That's going to be big enough for our, our, surface, our purposes. Um, but, of course, what happens when you try to like subtract two from one in your in your program and you're using word there right so we could implement like a safe decrement command that returns like some kind of value that tries to do the right thing and all that sort of thing but um that can get sometimes a little bit hairy make your code a little extra and in a project this size might not be worth it maybe See combat. This is redundant. Okay. Uh, One oh nine. I uh, that's redundant. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I, I've amended that. I know that's kind of gross code. Debug code. Okay, yeah, some of those are going to stick around because that's just the way it is. All right, so I fixed the others and I made those go away. Cool, cool. Um, so let me just go...
Okay, so back to what I was working on before there. And we were saying, let's add a game state. Uh, turns remaining. Remaining turns. All right, we can make it a word. We saved 200. All right, so if I make uh, X be a word, I'll make it one, two. Okay, scope type variables I have to enable. Oh yeah, so two, X is now, uh, type of X is word, All right? Uh, I can add word values to those, no problem. That works just fine. But what happens if I minus 10? I can wrap around, right? And I don't get an error about it. So, unfortunately, not terribly useful. Um, there is a module for like natural numbers, which is what they are, what we're talking about here. But last I checked, that wasn't terribly useful for this sort of thing either, because it doesn't do, it's mainly for type level naturals. Um, although maybe this is package. Numeric dot natural, yeah, arbitrary position. Numeric, no, no, no. Yeah, let's at least throw an exception. That's that's one way we could do about it. We could go about it as well. You could like, this is actually in base. Um, I'm thinking of a different package, the type level ones, but. Um, so exceptions aren't, I wouldn't really want to use this, I don't think. Because uh, these exceptions are thrown in IO, the IO channel, I think, I believe. Which is not super nice to program with. Useful and fine for like IO level stuff, but we're doing kind of pure code. All right, so I don't have to kind of like catch everywhere where all this stuff. So what we'll do, we'll just use integer and we'll just have to write a few tests to like make sure we catch all of our, our cases and make sure that we spec how, how that value is supposed to behave. Okay, so turn remaining, remaining turns. You can only tick down whenever you handle a command and the command should tick down a certain amount of turns. And then we just need to te detect the end game state like we do for when the ship runs out of energy and display the game over screen instead of the sector screen. So, um, let's go to our commands. It would be super cool. It would be super dope if I could specify along with these a certain amount of turns they have to tick down. That would be pretty neat. Um, doing it here though Like this might not be nice. I don't know if I could write. Um, we can refactor this a little bit into a like a higher like a, a type that wraps the command um, itself, so we could specify these things. Game command. 
simulation command, sim command, update command, something like that. Or uh, we could commit has command has cost. Or we could implement it like a type class. Hmm, this might be an okay way of doing it. I don't... I, usually when I'm writing Haskell code, I like to use type classes as ways of introducing new... Like, things that are really important. Like usually relationships between things where you want to specify like some kind of property between between something. Um, this like where you you could write some mathematical laws about the functions in the type class. Whereas this is more this is more this feels like more like we should just have a function turn cost. Yeah, this is probably simpler. This feels a little nicer. And then we could just pattern match on engine move something. Right. Jump move something. Fire phasers. Ignoring the arguments, let's just call it one. Uh, doc, let's just call it five. Got to enable lambda case for that syntax. And then there we go. That, that feels a little nicer and easier to, to work with and not too complex, nice and simple. Um, I don't know what jump move should be for now. Let's just make it zero. And engine move. Let's see. We can make that cost uh, fixed like two turns, say, or three turns. Yeah, they have like a formula for it in the original game. Um, but we're just getting started, so let's just use hard numbers. Okay. So there we go. Let's make a move two. Let's make a cost two. If we're going to do something a little bit, we could make this a little bit more deep later on. I think and extend this by making it like a state command that takes a game state and um, then it can just investigate the current command and figure that out. Right, so let's just go with this for now and see how it goes. Let's see how. Huh? So we have that or many turns. 
Um, so using that function now, we should be able to go to the, uh, the simulation, handle command. And so in each of these cases, we need to um, do the command handling and then the turn cost for that command. After we handle the command, we can do it up here in update simulation. After we handle the command, we can tick down the, um, the thing using our, our function. So we go game state uh, remaining turns. Uh, we're going to use the modify. Word to word. Uh, we're going to turn that where trains out to int, right? So let's do that. Let's do... to int. So we're going to negate no, uh, subtract Turn cost, command cost, what is it turn cost? Of command. Yeah, that should be right. So this is just the normal, like in Haskell, again, if you're new and watching the stream, you don't really know, that's cool. Uh, welcome, I hope you enjoy yourself. Uh, you can take the like, oper operators are just functions that have two arguments. And when you want to use them in like this kind of function normal function position like a uh, like we do with like handle fire phasers down here say i just put parentheses around them all right so this is just taking one argument and the other other argument is going to be our input uh the game state remaining turns hopefully and in order to see that this is working we got to render this in the ui So our info panel, this is render table. Let's pull this over here. Pull that there, put another row. We'll give it uh, turn, remaining turns. Just like that. Yeah, should be. I think that will compile. Let's see. No, no. Ah, uh, yeah. Let's see, our tests are a little bit, a little bit too precise. They're just, they're still good, but now we have to like add this this concept to the state. So. Yeah, I, wanna, I think I might want to fix those at some point. It's going to get annoying. Put this back. So uh, when we're... Oh, we also... We also should not do that if the command wasn't successful. We should like turn take the turn cost if it was if the turn was actually taken okay so we'll get to that in a second 
Uh, for now, uh, when we're next to the station, that should be a thing. I think it's saying it's a negative 195, which means we just have to flip, yeah, the the term around in that equation. So I can do that by just putting some back ticks around this. Doesn't want me to let me do that. No, I'm gonna do it inside the parentheses of this. That's no bueno either. No, okay. That trick isn't gonna work. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just call it sort of flip. So flip just flipped the arguments of the function it's given. Okay, 195, that's good. We'll do that again. 198. So let's go back to spec. And ignore that one for now. Because there it's gonna be part of the fix when we fix up. The other one is we should move this ship to an empty space. Uh, remaining turns. 198. Okay. So we're gonna we're gonna fix that one. It's pending for now, but we'll get to it. A little X, so we can um, just kind of make mark that as pending, and we'll fix that test later once we've done what we need to do. And F is the other one where you can focus it, and so only run that one test. Pretty handy stuff. Um, just on a large code base, when you're working with like a lot of other developers and writing a lot of tests, uh, it's good to lint for those to make sure they don't end up uh, in your actual code base, and you accidentally skip tests. You don't need to skip or focus only on tests, and don't run others. Little tip there for you. Okay. So, uh, we're kind of already sort of testing state remaining turns for these, which is fine, I guess. Um, that compiles and works. Yeah. Let's let's actually just run the game now quickly just to make sure that uh, it looks cool. Two, so it ticks down our energy, ticks down our remaining turns. That's good. Phaser should tick it down one. It does and. Docking should take it down five. There we go. But our energy goes back up. Super. So that's good and working. Uh, the thing that we need to fix about this, though, is if we move 10-10 into the star and we can't, it's still going to tick down our turns by two, even though Helm told us that would take us da, 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 and we didn't actually perform the move. We didn't actually move anywhere. Okay, so. Let's disable this and use that, this test as the fix for that. So game state remaining Turns it should still be 200. Hey, Count Torin, howdy, welcome to the stream. I am doing well. I just got back from a vacation. I am in my lane. 
been great. Okay, so we do have that, that bug there, so let's go fix that. Let's go to Steam Nation. So how do we... How do we know that we can... We can... We, we should do this or not. Alright, Handle Command returns a unit. So it doesn't say anything about it. Whether it was successful or not. Uh, I went cottaging in Northern Ontario, in Canada, and it was fun. Yeah. A little, uh, a little lake called Mag Magnetawan. Hopefully I'm saying that right. And it's a small, it's a fairly small lake, but, um, it's quiet. There's not a lot of other cottages in the area. And I saw... Cottaging. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of a... Uh, I don't know. Like, people in different parts of the world vacation differently, you know? And yeah, in, in Ontario, in Canada, it's, it's a thing that people do in the southern part. We have all these cottages in the kind of more wilder parts of the northern part of the province that aren't terribly um, they're not like occupied in much there's not a lot of like the cities are like they're not even cities they're like little villages of like 100 people or so every here and there um, yeah so people like to have cottages up there to like kind of get away from life and, and go live the rural remote life and so I did that for a week with my kids and my sister and her family and everybody, and it was fun. So, it's good times. Not during the summer, not at all. It was beautiful, nice and warm. Cool nights, so we had little fires and stuff, and roasted marshmallows. Um, I found an emerald snake while I was there. I caught a little emerald snake. It was beautiful green, little yellow belly. It was amazing. Um, we caught fish. I saw a northern goshawk. It's pretty cool. Did a lot of swimming in the lakes. Um, yeah. So, so in order for this to work, uh, games handling a command has to tell us that it was successful somehow. Uh, let's look at the game state itself. So, command error isn't going to be a good one, because not all commands will return a command error. That's usually reserved just for parse failures. Yeah, <laughs> backpacking, hiking, it's good times. Um, I, I love getting away and like getting into nature and, and doing all those sorts of things. Um, so yeah, maybe we should add a little type here that just says that handle command can return that just says like the command we actually executed and did the thing that the command was doing or like we didn't. To be a nomad? I don't know about that. <laughs> I wasn't, I didn't come from a, like a nomadic culture, so I don't, the nomad monad. <laughs> Uh, I'm not sure that I'm the kind of person that would enjoy doing that. I have a lot of friends who traveled around the world and did, like, the digital nomad life. Um, some of them liked it. Some of them, they, you know, they, they, learned, they, they found out it wasn't for them. Uh, I, I find that I need to have, like, roots and routine, and I like to be where I am and just be there. <laughs> I've traveled here and there, but not very frequently. But yeah, it could be very fun to do that, perhaps. 
there's some people that really enjoy that kind of thing for sure and you can do it like actually even up in those regions in fairly remote parts of canada these days you can get cell service and, and data so it's possible yeah it is definitely good to do it for a while and get out there for sure i agree i got that part of out of me earlier in my life <laughs> So now I'm just a grumpy old man who likes to stay where he is. Um, okay, so enough about America. Let's say command result. This is an easy one. Uh, either formed. Or denied. I think those are okay names. Do you have a better one? All right, so this becomes uh, that, and then. Hmm. These are all going to be performed. All right, I actually have to go into Handle Engine Move and update that. Ah, no problem. No problem. What we're trying, what we're trying to do here, is make handle command return a valuable, a useful, semantically meaningful result, so that up here on line thirty-one, when we go to decrement the remaining turns, we know we can look at the results of handle command to know that we should actually do this. So like, so like with this, we go when. Um, command results is equal performed, then do this. So, handle engine move should now take responsibility for also returning this. This is always going to be denied because we haven't implemented it yet. Uh, handle fire phasers. The handle engine. Well. In this case, pure unit, that's going to be a do. Um, that's going to be an not performed. I denied. Jump to the next one. Oh, that's in the combat module. Okay. Uh, bear, 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 bear. Ooh. Mm. I gotta put command result in command. So it can be imported from both modules. Uh, the result of executing command may change state. 
if it does change the state uh, performed indicates so and denied uh, performed indicates that game time has elapsed successfully by successfully has elapsed and denied means that the command was not carried out was not executed I think that that's kind of what that that means there it's just a that so uh we import that from command and this is always going to be denied for now because we haven't implemented it and Let's see if enemy is destroyed. We say dialog this. Uh, we then turn pure uh, formed. Uh, no, in both cases, we're going to do pure perform, so I'm just going to remove that here. And then... Oh, unless it's always going to do this. Uh, I'm going to return unit. Hmm. Ugh, unless it isn't good there. Unless it's going to be always M unit. Uh, who will who will save me? M. What else could it return, really? I guess if A is a monoid, there's the base unit return value, like the the identity. Um, I could write. We could write a helper version of this. We could though actually what else could the you can't just have uh a here can you maybe i don't know if it's monoidal just go applicative <laughs> yeah We could put the guard here for this branch. Move this unless into a guard. Uh, 
uh, with not null enemies. I have a little bit of indentation, but uh, I'm gonna do it again with 4M. We're under the same issue. Splitting, uh, so this is, this code is convenient because we were just manipulating the state. We didn't care about returning our, our results of this. And so unless and for him uh, all worked just fine. Oh wait, hang on a second. Uh, hang on, maybe we just need to get rid of the 4M underscore. Uh, command result. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Try this again. Put a guard here. And... For him, underscore describes its results. Oh yeah, so 4M without discarding music is blah, 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 blah. So instead of a case pattern match, do a new function. Yeah, yeah, that could be a way too. Like that, maybe energy amount, parent, phaser mode, so firing mode, data state, game state, command result, do fire. Remote equals pump this down. We still have to consider that we don't actually want to fire anything if there's no enemies to fire on. Um, but then we can pop this in here. We give it to the case statement uh, by going phaser automatic. This do.
And then uh, we can do fire. Uh, what was it? Phaser manual. Still missing the enemies to be in scope. Okay. We have those here. Up top of the enemies. And that's going to be it. Me. Okay. And right there. Move that over as well. That's happening. That should be denied. Uh, so the only thing then is to put the case match when the enemies are not null. So what happened here? Oh, we still need a command result here. Let's not throw away the results. Find it. X is a list of units. <laughs> Super helpful. Um, that's that's fine, actually. Uh, an unempty list of units means that we've damaged at least one. So I have null x, and uh, we have successfully carried out the command. Formed, else denied. Yeah, I know about that. Okay. Let's see if everything works. Getting a little bit into the weeds here. Okay, we have to fix handle docking, right? Okay, back to simulation. Command result, here we are. In this case, we return pure denied. Otherwise, we return pure performed. Let's make this a do.
Okay, that's all those. I suspect this will compile. And I'm right. Muhaha. Alright, let's check it out. Did our plan work? Probably a written test for it. Anyways. Okay. Didn't use any energy for that dock. That was cool. We tried to move 10-10. Didn't use energy for that. But if we do try and move like 7-3, that move consumed some energy and some remaining turns. And if we fire our phasers, we destroy the ship and use a turn. And our energy, we can move over to the station. Just our energy and turns again. We can dock. That'll take up five turns and replenish our energy. There we go. Sweet. Okay, let's review the change here and see if there's like anything we want to. Oh, it's quite a bit. This is touching quite a lot of things. Mm. I don't like you taking such. I don't know if you've been if you've been watching the stream, you might notice that I don't like to take such big steps. I always get nervous when I take big steps like this because then I'm like, what changed? How did is it? Uh, um. Okay, so. Thanks, Count Oren. Couldn't have done it without you. That was a great suggestion. Breaking out that function really helped uh, simplify the terms there and made this happen. So thanks. That was great. Um, so that looks pretty all right. That's that's the gist of it right there with the combat. Push down the combat result type all the way down so that. We can know when we handle the command at a higher level whether we changed the state in a meaningful way or if we just added some dialogue and, did, and the ship actually did nothing in the simulation. And this lets us count down the turns only when the ship actually does something in the simulation and time passes. So that's good. Um, I mean, the code's, the code's not too bad. I don't know if performed and denied is like the right words I would use, but they're documented. And if we can think of a better name, a rose by any other name is still a rose. So it works. Let's commit it. Okay, add turn cost counting. Add remaining turns. Countdown. Yeah. When performing a command, when when a command is successfully executed, uh, we count down the remaining turns by a fixed amount. There we go. Sick. Okay. That puts us in a good spot to say goodnight and call it a day. I'm going to push up the code. So if this is your first time tuning in, welcome. Thank you for hanging out and, and uh, hanging around. All the code that you've seen today on this stream is on GitHub. I'm Agent Ultra. This is my stream. This is what I do. And uh, it's on, on here. The game's called Lambda Hack. You can get it here. Star, fork, whatever you want. Download it. Mess around. Thanks, Zarek. Thank you, Kantorin. It's been nice and it's been a pleasure. Uh, you can go to the link above, too. The link above here uh, points to our Discord server. So there's a Discord server here with a bunch of other people doing uh, programming in all kinds of different programming languages. Um, some of them are Haskell, like this one. And there's a channel there for just the stream. So if there's a question you wanted to ask, um, I, but you didn't want to ask on stream, or something you come up with between streams, chat there and hang out. It's pretty cool. There's some good folks there. 
course, you can also follow me on the socials. Uh, I'm on the Mastodon servers on types.pl at Agent Alter there. There, let's see. Pull that up. Beep, 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 beep. You can check it out. It was me. And what else? That's it for now. I usually do these streams on Tuesday evenings around 10 after 8 in the Eastern Standard Time Zone once a week. But if you like, subscribe or follow or whatever, you know, turn on those notifications, you'll get notified when I go online because sometimes I do random stuff and stream other things. So follow along for those. Uh, and yeah, we'll see you next week. Thanks again. It's been a pleasure. Uh, may your monads always be free and may your types always check. And we'll see you next week. Peace out.